All right. Question one is we're solving this equation. So first step, step one, is to identify the common denominator. So we have n over 1. Remember, if something doesn't have a denominator, it's 1. 2n and 19 thirds. So because none of those are the same, we put these all together. It's 1 times n times 3, which is really 3n. That's our common denominator. Okay, step 2 is identify restrictions. So there's some values that would make this whole thing undefined. I want you to think about the asymptotes that we did in the first section. What can the denominator not equal? N cannot equal zero. That would make this undefined would be done. So that's a restriction. It's what the value cannot equal. So look at your denominators. Okay, step three is multiply everything by the common denominator. So we're gonna multiply everything by 3n. So again, I'm gonna write this out and I'm leaving some space because that 3n now goes to everything and we write it on the numerator because it's really 3n over one. So we're timesing everything by 3n. And what that does, the whole reason we do this is because we don't want fractions anymore. So now I have n times 3n plus, look, no more n's. 2 times 3 equals, the 3's cancel, 19n. So I have 3n squared plus 6 equals 19n. Okay, step 4 is solve. And this is a quadratic. It has a squared. So because of that squared, it's called a quadratic. And that means there's two answers. So in order to solve, we have to get this equal to zero. I'm going to need more room here. So I'm going to minus 19n. And then I'm going to write this in descending order. 3n squared minus 19n plus 6 equals zero. And from here, you can factor. Or you can use the quadratic formula, which we used in math too. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So I like to factor, if you want to use quadratic formula, it's this thing where you identify A, B, C, and plug in those values. So A would be 3, B would be negative 19, and C would be 6. That works too. I'm going to factor. So I have 3 times 6, which is 18, and I can already see 1 times 18. So I'm going to rewrite the middle using negative 1 minus 18. Oops, I forgot my n's. Negative 1n minus 18n. And then I'm going to bring down my plus 6 and my 3n squared and group. So group the first two, group the second two, and take out my common factors. So on this one, the only factor is n. So n is 3n minus 1 left over. And here I have to take out a negative because we're leading with a negative. So I'm going to, I have to take out negative 6. And then, oops, I'm left with 3n minus 1 as well. So remember when you factor, these have to be the same. That means we did it right. And that's one factor. So 3n minus 1. And then the second factor is what we took out, n minus 6. And now we're ready to solve. The equals 0 is really important now. That has to be included because that's how we solve. 
So we solve by setting each factor equal to zero. And then I'm going to add 6 to get this answer. 3n equals 1 divided by 3. So my answers are 6 and 1 third, but that's not the end. When we're solving rationals, the last step is to look for what we call extraneous solutions. So that means some of these... One of these probably won't, won't work. So six and one third. So I'm going to go back and go to Desmos and I'm just going to type in our original thing. So we have n plus two over n. Guess what? It doesn't work if you use n. So there's our x's and that equals 19 thirds. So what happens if x equals 6, one of our answers? If x is 6, that equals the same thing. Awesome. Well, what if x is 1 third? That also equals the same thing. Awesome. That means we have no extraneous solutions. We have two that work out. So no extraneous here. If we got things that did not equal, that's when the extraneous comes in. So 6, 1 third.